In today's video, I'm going to show you how I set up my hot cues and my cue points on my tracks that I use in my DJ sets. This is my personal preference. There is no right or wrong way to do this, but if you're a new DJ and wondering how an experienced DJ does this, then this is the video for you. So without further ado, let's jump onto Record Box and I'll talk you through a few tracks and where I set up those cue points. Okay, so welcome along to Recordbox. This is just export mode where you can prepare all of your tracks in advance. When you are in Recordbox, in order to set up your cue points, just make sure that you have cue loop enabled and not grid. This is how you basically correct the beat grid. You don't want this view, you want the menu at the bottom here that is cue and loop. The track that I'm using for this demonstration is Looking by Tempo Electric. Thank you to him for letting me use this track. Link in the description down below to his Spotify. Do check it out if you like housey stuff. Um, he's got loads of good records on Spotify. So essentially there are two types of cue points first and foremost in um, Record Box and on Pioneer Equipment. You have your hot cues which are identified by these um, letters down at the bottom and then you also have your memory cue which is essentially highlighted by this little red arrow you can see here. Um, there is only one key difference is that hot cues are hot so as soon as you basically activate a hot cue the record will start playing from that particular point. With the cue, the traditional kind of memory cue, you have to use the call buttons on the CDJ or controller when you set it. And effectively, all that happens is it's assigned to the cue button. So you have to activate it by pressing either cue. But when you release the cue button, it returns back to the cue point or you have to press the play button. Now, effectively, I use both of these uh, when I am setting up my cue points and I use them interchangeably. The reason being is because I do work in some nightclubs where hot cue buttons don't work as well as they should do. Similarly, I work in some clubs where the cue button doesn't work as it should be. So um, I have to use the hot cues in order to sort of get the track started. Now, when it comes to dance music, I'll come on to an R&B and hip hop example in a moment, but when it comes to dance music, I always download the extended mix, so the club version effectively. And traditionally, there will always be either an eight bar, a 16 bar or 32 bar intro when it comes to these tracks. And I am very, very simple when it comes to um, setting up my cue points. The first cue point will always go on the first beat. So that's cue point A. I've also got a memory cue set up here as well. So that's basically so that if I'm just mixing from one track into the other, I can do it effectively and I've always got that ready to go. The second cue point will be halfway through the intro. So you can see on this particular track, we have an intro that is 32 bars, which is pretty standard for a lot of dance music tracks. Um, so I will always do my second cue point halfway through that intro because often I'm trying to mix as quickly as possible and people have short attention spans. So sometimes I don't want to play the whole intro. So on this, because it's a 32 bar um, intro at 16, after 16 bars will be my second cue point. And you can start to see the build up of the vocal on that second point. Um, point C is um, the beginning of the vocal breakdown. And I use this if I'm going from um, an outro. So if I want to almost like an a cappella build up to the next track, I sometimes do that. So um, you can see here. So if that's on the right key with the other track, if you're mixing in key properly, that could sound quite nice um, on the beat of another track. And then finally, cue point D is always the drop. So that's my, um, that's my fourth and final cue point. That's if I wanna literally go straight in. I also use this to make kind of mashups on the fly when you have the build up of one track and you want a completely different drop 
of another track, then um, that's how I do it effectively. I just set the um, the I just set the track off from from the drop. Also, as well, if you're performing with any MCs or anything like that, um, who want you to do a spin back on the track because the the crowd are going wild, effectively you can then quite easily find the drop because that's the point where you probably want to reload it from rather than playing the whole intro again. It is important to note that this particular track is a 32 bar intro. So if um, the track has a 16 bar intro, I will do, of course, um, the uh, cue point from zero beats or zero bars, the first beat. And then I'll also have a cue point at eight bars in rather than at 16 bars in. So I just halve everything. So that's a dance track. Let's move on to R&B and hip hop. So generally when it comes to R&B, I mix quite simply. I do, I always get an intro version. So like a DJ friendly version. Um, at the moment I'm getting most of my tracks from um, Zip DJ, uh, which I've mentioned before. I'll mix an intro over a chorus so there is no vocal clashes but when it comes to the cue points i'm really really basic when it comes to this i'll do one cue point at the very first beat a little bit like the dance tracks so you can hear that there i don't want to get a copyright claim so i can't play too much of these tracks and then my second cue point you notice here it's the memory cues you can see the arrow at the top here rather than hot cues that I've set up here um, is on the the chorus um, so that first chorus you know what, right, baby, what do you want? and the reason for that is um, because again if I've got an MC and the crowd are going nuts and they want me to spin it back is so I can actually access that cue point nice and quickly um, and generally speaking, when the chorus, that first beat of the chorus drops, that's when I'm mixing in the next R&B track. So hopefully that is useful for you. That is how I set up my cue points. I hope that you found this quick video useful. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so by hitting the button over there. And if you haven't seen my last video on how to get a DJ set up for under $500 or £500, then watch up there and I will see you in the next video.